What is up you guys? Glitches here and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you my latest and greatest warrior build for Enshrouded. A lot of things have changed since the Hollows Halls update that just dropped within the game. Um, I'm sure a lot of you checked out my previous video for my updated mage build guide. I will be making one for the hunter as well uh, within the next couple days. I just got a little bit more testing to do. But for the warrior build, I basically wanted to incorporate some of the new weapons and new changes to the skills that came with the updated patch to basically allow you to solo the highest level tier four hollowed halls without any issues whatsoever. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Um, right out the gate, let's go to armor. So for the helmet, I'm running the Radiant Paladin helmet. This will give us plus 15% melee critical strike chance as well as um, plus 12 uh, percent critical strike damage. Um, a lot of people go with the soldier helmet because of the tooltip, but the Radiant Paladin helmet is actually bugged right now on the tooltip. You do get the bonus 12% critical strike damage as well. It's just not on the description for some reason. So that's why I go with that because you're getting better uh, resistances in my opinion. So that is what I go for with the helmet. For the chest piece, I run the Radiant Paladin chest piece. This will give you plus 240 health and 24 stamina, as well as some really nice resistances. Again, we want to try and hit that soft cap for armor, um, and health is the next best thing you want to invest in. This one gives you a big boost to your health. Moving on to gloves, the best in slot, in my opinion, is the soldier gloves. This will give you plus 3% damage against melee foes, which is pretty much the majority of the enemies that you're going to be coming across, as well as 12% damage to one-handed melee uh, weapons. Now, this is also a bug tooltip. That 12% uh, damage bonus also works for two-handed weapons right now, so that is why this is such a great pair of gloves, in my opinion. If, for some reason, they change that down the road and uh, they make it so that it only works with one-handed weapons. The Deer Stalker gloves is another good uh, option that I can recommend because that is just a flat damage bonus that you're gonna be getting across the board and it helps for your ranged weapons, which we will be using a little bit, uh, our bow and arrow. Um, so as for the gloves, Soldier Gloves is the one I go with. For the pants, I go with the Radiant Paladin trousers to uh, health regeneration and 90 bonus health. And then lastly, for the legs, I go with the Deadeye Boots. This will give us plus three stamina regen and a huge minus 700 stamina regeneration delay. So stamina running out will not be an issue with this build. The second you run out, especially if you're doing your bonk attack uh, pretty frequently, um, your stamina will just instantly fill right back up. There's almost no delay whatsoever. So really, really good pair of boots for melee users. Moving on to the rings. Um, so these have changed. In my opinion, the funnest thing that I like to run, which basically makes you basically like invincible, is running double Gemini rings. This will give you plus 16 life leech, and this will combo with a new potion that we're going to be taking as one of our consumables to give us upwards of 26% life leech against all the enemies within the hollow. And uh, that's basically every fourth hit. So not just every fourth swing, because when you go into a large pack of enemies, sometimes one swing will hit four enemies. So pretty much with every swing, you're going to get at least one tick of health regeneration, and it's going to give you 100% of that health regeneration from your attack back as health. So super helpful there. Now, if you feel like you're basically having overkill on life regen and you want to get a little bit better boost to some other stats the other thing you can run is a ring of the ancients this ring does work properly now that'll give you plus one to dexterity which will help with our bows a little bit plus one to strength always good for a warrior plus one to constitution for more health the endurance is good for our stamina spirit and intelligence not so much but you do get uh, a good four perks that are pretty useful for the build so definitely a nice little option there uh, moving on for our shield, which we will be using, I run the Shield of Light. Pretty straightforward. It has the highest block of any shield in the game, uh, highest durability, and 90 parry power. For our long-range weapon, I like running the Silver Shot Bow. This is similar to the... Um, uh, what is it? The Flame Bow. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm totally blanking right now for some reason. The uh, Ignited Bow. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Um... For damage-wise, um, Ignited Bow is pretty similar in the fact that it has three damage perks 
and Headseeker. Um, the reason why I like, at least for the Hollow Halls, however, to run the um, Silver Shot Bow is because it has two damage perks as well as two new perks called Sacred. This is a new ability that dropped with uh, the Hollow Halls patch. And what Sacred does is it basically gives you an additional 10% against Hollowed enemies, which is almost every single enemy within the Hollow Halls. So you get two damage perks that are nice and 20% additional flat damage against them. Plus, it has Health Leech, so on top of all the lifesteal we're going to be getting with every single hit with this particular weapon, you're also going to be getting additional Life Leech from the weapon itself. Um, so that is a good secondary one if we're looking for flat damage to use against like the Cyclopses, for example. I actually recommend using the Gore Striker. Um, this has is actually one of the only one-handed blunt weapons that has full damage perks. We have 11 Shock, 11 Piercing, 11 Shroud, 11 Blunt, and 11 uh, another 11 Shroud. So 22 Shroud total. And so I did all the testing with pretty much all the one-handers and within the hollowed halls, the gore striker was actually doing the most damage out of any of them, even more than the bone scourge mates, just because of the straight flat out bonus damage perks that it's getting. Um, bone scourge mace is a good second alternative. Oh, this is the second highest damage um, from what I tested, but it also has additional life leech. So this is good when you're going against the uh, big packs of enemies, smaller ones that kind of surround you. You basically never run out of health. Um, the other thing that I like to run is the Ignited Hammer. I know a lot of people get sick and tired of doing the Downward Smash all the time, so I wanted to add in some good two-handed and good one-handed um, because the uh, two-handed does kill, thing fast, uh, kill things faster, but it doesn't have as good a survivability because you don't really get any uh, like massive regen from it. Um, so the Ignited Hammer will exclusively lose, uh, use only for when there's big clumps of enemies. You can just Downward Smash and just obliterate almost all of them in one hit um, and just chain that over and over again until you get down to the last couple then switch to your one-handed weapon and mop them all up um, so that is pretty much my choices for weapons um, you can also technically if you want use the sword of radiance um, i know i did this in my last uh build video for the warrior back when they had terrible survivability only because it has five precise perks on it which gives you um, basically 25 critical hit chance bonus um, when you're attacking so pretty much every single swing is going to be a crit which gives us a ton of super fast regen the only downside is the maximum damage output isn't going to be as high and uh, with some of the other perks we're taking in the tree we're getting pretty good life steal anyway especially with the potion so having that high crit chance isn't as necessary anymore um, before we had that potion it was but now that we've got some cool additional perks and potions to use, I like to go with weapons that are a little bit higher damage now. So that's why I went with the uh, maces. Blunt damage, of course, being the weapon uh, damage type of choice because all of these skeletons within the hollows are weak to blunt damage. So that's nice. That's why I tried sticking to maces for all of these. Um, moving on to consumables. Obviously, you're gonna to wanna to take your highest level health potions. I like to take Wisps of Light because a lot of the areas within the Hollowed Halls are really dark and there's a lot of secret areas that you can actually miss if your surroundings aren't lit up enough. So I take that. Um, the Gore Tusk, or Gore Striker rather, actually does have a little bit of a blue glow um, by default. So if you have only this equipped, that does light up the area around you a little bit too, which is kind of nice. Um, moving on, I like to take the Elixirs. Um, I have a really good farming spot um, that I can show off. I showed this off in my uh, mage uh, build video. Um, this will give us a 30% flat damage multiplier for 30 minutes, which is really nice. To farm these, you can go to an area right in the beginning zone called Rookmore. Just throw down a little altar right outside the Eastern Gate. And when you run in through that Eastern Gate, immediately hang a left and you'll see two Elixir Potions that are guaranteed spawns right on the tables just inside the entrance gate. Um, and then all you gotta do is do that reset, load up your game again uh, type of uh, hack there and just farm them over and over again. So that's how you can quickly get a big stack of those. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up for um, consumables is um, I like to bring Fire Whisk Summons. You get tons of these um, within the Hallowed Halls and they were just sitting in my vault doing nothing. Um, they're sort of like the Necromancy Skulls, but we're not gonna be taking Necromancy because we're obviously not using wizard spells, but this is a nice little alternative to give you some additional passive damage. Um, when you're in close quarters combat, especially with the Cyclopses. So I'll pop off maybe three or four of these and they'll just kind of surround me and do damage um, on top of what I'm doing with my weapons. 
But that is not all. There is actually one additional buff that isn't uh, consumable that I want to uh, basically make you guys aware of. And that is the scroll of uh, Voka Strength or something, I think it's called. Um, and it actually, I keep bringing up how the Pillars of Creation is a great place to not only build your base, but if anything, just put an altar down because it's in the center of the map and it's just really good for travel. But it's also near the research camp where you can farm uh, prayer of flame scrolls for your wizard builds and also this uh, Volca uh, encampment, which you can quickly fly down to to get the uh, strength buff. So I can show you guys how to get that. Um, if you build right on top of here, you just glide down. And then immediately drop down to this lower level here. And this is basically where you would come out of the exit of the uh, research camp. And you can just bypass all these enemies. And right on this platform in the center is going to be the Blessing. Uh, yeah, Volcar is what it's called. So you can just quickly go back here. We'll jump back to the base real quick. Hopefully someone doesn't hit me. There we go. So if we go into our stats now, for 30 minutes this lasts, but we can go into our character sheet, or actually status details, and the Vokar buff will give us an additional 25 health, but also a huge 20% melee damage buff. Now because this friggin' buff doesn't come in the form of a consumable, a lot of people don't take the time to pick this up, but if you have an altar right nearby where one of the... Uh, spawn points are for one of these buffs um just grab that right before you go into one of the hollowed halls and that is another 20 percent additional damage we're going to be getting um for 30 minutes just by quickly diving down and grabbing that so really good buff there uh, moving on the other consumables i like to take and these are the ones you can craft um, are the open sandwich this will give us plus four flat strength and plus two constitution for more damage and more health that will last 45 minutes. And the other one I like to take instead of the meat wrap is actually chicken soup. You get one less constitution. Instead of five, you get four. Um, but it does give plus one to dexterity, which will increase our bow damage slightly for all of the ranged enemies that we're going to be taking down with our bow and arrow. Um, last but not least, I will correct myself. I made a mistake. Um, I was uh, ignorant to the details and the typos within the tooltips. There seems to be a lot of them in this game right now, but I recommend the excellent ectoplasm soup. This can be crafted from the new vendor that unlocked within the hollowed halls patch. This gives you minus 150 health, which may seem like a downside, but this build is super, super tanky. So it's not that big of a deal, but it also gives plus 15% damage against the hollow, which is pretty much every enemy within the hollowed halls and 10% life leech against enemies within the hollow. So you combine that 10% with the, um, basically 20% that, or 20, or 16% rather, that we're getting from our Gemini rings, and that's 26% life leech on all of our hits that we're gonna be getting against all the enemies within the Hall of Halls, which is huge. So you're basically invincible, honestly. You just regen health super fast. And I know in my previous video, I said that I wouldn't recommend this. I go with the second tier one because 50 minutes was better than one minute. This is actually a tooltip error. It's not one minute, it's actually one hour. So if you do have the materials, I do recommend going with the highest tier ectoplasm soup that you can craft, not the lower level ones. And to quickly show that off, Basically, you're going to find this new NPC once that you start the quest line. He's going to send you on a mission to go hunt down the parts to craft the ectoplasm press. Within that press, you get the recipes to craft tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3 uh, ectoplasms. Once you craft those ectoplasms, you could then talk to the vendor again. And under supplies, that is where he has the recipes for the different soups. He has a tier 1, which is 50 health. 10 damage, uh, bonus damage, and 8 life leech. The medium tier 1, 100, minus 100 health, 12% damage, and 9% life leech. And then the big boy potion, which is 150 health, but 15% damage, and 10% life leech. And that only costs yucca fruit and the excellent ectoplasms. And these are actually super easy to craft. You get a ton of those crystals. Some of the uh, single enemies alone will drop like 6 or 7 of those crystals at a time. So you get stacks and stacks and stacks of these. It's actually really easy to craft. And the yucca fruit's really easy to find in the desert as well. So definitely a really good consumable to take. Moving on. Obviously, I like to take a stack of iron arrows for our bow and arrow. I like to bring a uh, greater shroud survival flasks because you will be in the shroud for extended periods of time within the hallowed halls. And then lastly, for some additional um, uh, stamina, I like to take flasks of the fell. 
That'll give you plus 20 stamina for 30 minutes. Um, the other thing I highly recommend, which I actually didn't realize this when I made my wizard video, is to not bring two picks like I did. Bring one pick and one axe. And the reason I recommend bringing the iron axe is because all of those spawn... Uh, uh, basically bone pillars that the additional bonus skeleton spawn from and even the large one towards the end of the run um, can be killed with one swing with the iron axe pickaxe you got to uh, hit it a bunch of times same with your spells takes three or four hits literally one swing with the axe will instantly destroy one of those respawn uh, little pillars so bring that in as soon as you get to like that first boss arena for example whip out your axe and just one shot both of those pillars so no more enemies can spawn in and then swap back to your weapon and you'll be good to go but that is your go-to basically respawn pillar killer um, so that's what i like to bring there uh, moving on um, we got equipment done we've got our consumables done i guess we can go over our skills a lot of things change with this so right out the gate i like to take the point in endurance followed by runner and double jump for more maneuverability um, i like to take an additional point in endurance for a little bit more stamina followed by the point in dexterity in the ranger tree marksman because um, we do want to put some points into um, the marksman tree so our bow and arrow isn't garbage um, all damage dealt with ranged weapons is increased by 10 percent followed by sharpshooter all range damage is increased by an additional 20 percent so 30 damage or 30 percent total skill shot all damage dealt to the head is increased by 20 percent and then lastly ranger this gives us huge boost to critical chance critical damage as well as dexterity and stamina recharge so you do get some bonuses to your melee stuff as well by going down this branch which is nice so a really good perk to take there moving on i like to take well rested um one big thing that uh, a couple of you pointed out in the comments section that i didn't even think about was that uh, say you die from like the gliding puzzle or something stupid and you lose your well-rested buff, um, uh, having the well-rested um, perk is actually really nice because you can actually bring some wood or chop one of the bookshelves down to get some wood and craft a campfire and use the campfire right next to one of the checkpoint beacons um, right within the hollowed halls. And you actually can get upwards of like 12, 13 plus minutes sometimes of your well-rested buff back with this buff normally it'd only be like five minutes to ten minutes um which won't last very long some of these runs can take 30 40 minutes plus so having that will basically give you enough to get you to the next uh checkpoint and have that stamina recharge rate filled up for the entire time so uh really good buff to take for the hollowed halls and it's just nice to have uh when you're out in the wild for extended period of time um, the other thing I like to take in the athlete tree is strength followed by jump attack. You don't need the full level two jump attack. I, you do enough damage, honestly, with just the single one. Um, and I wanted to min max the points. So jump attack basically lets you do that downward smash when you double jump. Um, that does a huge AOE damage ring uh, to multiple enemies at the same time. Moving on to the barbarian tree. Pick up the point in strength followed by heavy handed. An enemy's stun bar is increased by an additional 20% when attacking into their block followed by the quick point in strength and constitution then pick up relentless dealing damage with two-handed uh, uh any two-handed weapon will increase your critical chance by another 10 percent on the next hit quickly pick up the point in constitution followed by heavy specialization i did put a video out of a demo that it does make a significant difference that can make or break you getting a full combo off with your two-handed hammers um so i pick, uh, recommend picking this up followed by barbarian you will gain two levels of strength for every one level of flame um, or every two levels of flame. So that is two additional strength we're getting there. And then lastly, blood rage. This is a big one. When an enemy is killed within 10 meters with a melee weapon, the damage done with melee weapons is increased by 20% for 10 seconds. And the packs within the hollowed halls are really big. There's tons of enemies. So this activates, <clears throat> excuse me, this activates almost instantly every single fight that you get into. So that is a huge passive damage boost that you're going to get. Moving on, I like to pick up Feast because our uh, meat is our main uh, food item. Meat is now in, uh, increases health by an additional 15%, so we become even tankier. Uh, in the Warrior Tree, I like to pick up the Quick Point in Constitution, followed by the Warrior's Path. When attacking with a melee weapon, all damage is increased by 10%. That goes for one-handed and two-handed. Uh, moving on, 
for uh, the quick point and strength, I then pick up both slasher and butcher for 30% increased damage with cutting damage weapons. That'll be good for um, the uh, gore striker. Um, and then also brute and hammer time for additional 30% blunt damage. This will be good for both the gore striker and the uh, spine splitter uh, hammer. And of course our ignited hammer um, that is really good uh, for our blunt damage against the skeletons. Lastly, pick up Veteran when attacking with a melee weapon. It will increase your critical hit chance by 10%, followed by the Quick Point in Constitution and Strength. Lastly, Swift Blades allows you to attack faster with one-handed swords and axes. This also works with maces. Um, I don't know why the tooltips are wrong still. They haven't updated it, but it is work uh, works with maces as well. Um, so that'll be just allowing you to hit even quicker, followed by the Quick Point in Constitution. And then last but not least, in the Tank Tree, you want to quick up, uh, pick up Constitution, followed by Shiny Plates for 10% more armor. Then Heavy Plates for additional 10% uh, uh, armor mitigation. Followed by Evasion Attack. This is a good like dodge out, dodge back in uh, power strike that you can do. And then lastly, Battle Heal. When dealing critical damage with a melee weapon, you heal 5% of your maximum health. This will combo with the Health Leech on our mace and the Life Leech potions and the rings that we're taking to give us a ton of health back on all of our attacks. Um, next, pick up the Quick Point in Constitution, followed by both Tower and Warden. This will give us 15% less magic damage and 10% less physical damage. And then lastly, I pick up Strength, Strength, and Constitution, followed by Earth Aura. This is going to be a flat 10% damage reduction across the board for you and all of your party members within 10 meters of you. And this is a flat 10%. It doesn't need any requirements to activate. It's just going to be a permanent buff that will be with you at all times. So... Really, really tanky build. Um, super uh, quick uh, kills for big mobs of enemies and decent damage for heavy hitting uh, slower boss enemies as well. Um, and with the combination of the life leech rings and our health regen perks, you basically are invincible. You regen health super, super quick. So without any further ado, I guess the last thing that we can do is pop all of our consumables and check out our attributes and then jump into a combat demo. So let's go and equip our frenzy potion. Let's equip our meat, our soup, and lastly, our ectoplasm potion. We'll even do the stamina, why not? So a bunch of buffs, and we still have our Vakar buff right now. So go over to our character attributes. So as it stands, we're sitting at 22 constitution, so a ton of health, five spirit, nine endurance, and 20 strength. Also huge, ton of extra damage there. Nine dexterity for our bows and five intelligence. For damage, we have a 67% critical damage, 10% critical chance. This is actually wrong with our uh, weapon uh, perks that give us additional chance, our armor perks that give us additional chance. This is actually a lot higher. Uh, melee critical strike chance uh, is 25%. We also have plus 3% against melee foes and plus 15% with our potion against all the enemies within the hollow. We also have 12% two-handed melee damage and plus 30% bow damage. And then moving on to protection, we have 271 physical resistance and 145 magical resistance. So we are a little more susceptible to magic, but with the amount of health regen that we're getting and how few and far between the magic using enemies are, you really don't have to worry that much. That like Reaper at the end is almost more tricky than the Cyclops bosses in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that is our stats. I guess the last thing we can do is jump into the hollowed halls. I'll do a recording right now of the run. Won't show the full run, but I'll show sort of the same things I did in my mage build. Some tight, close quarters combat with uh, rooms that have big chunks of enemies and probably one of the boss rooms. And uh, kind of demonstrate the build and see if you guys like it. Um, but yeah, check you guys out here in a minute. All right, you guys. So we're at the first main uh, section of the tier four hollowed halls. Uh, we don't have updraft, so I won't be able to do the full glide that I do with my mage to uh, kind of pull all the enemies at once. So we will have to run past this little section. Um, I still do the same tactic and pull everything down there. I just bypass it and kill all this stuff. So you can see how fast you just obliterate everything with those down passage. Oh, 
tons of health regen like nothing. This is where we'll glide down. Kind of pull them all at the same time. Try not to get stuck this time. You can almost kill them faster with a warrior than you can with a mage. Switch to our Gortus. So you can just see how much health regen. Our health, even if we're getting beat on, you can literally just spam your normal attack and just gain all of that health back instantly. That was rude. You literally just can't die with this build. With all the life leech you're getting. It's pretty nuts, honestly. He's still alive. You can see the glow from the uh, Gore Striker is nice. Here's a good area with a ton of mobs. Most annoying thing in this as a warrior is actually those flying bugs. Has our health dropped even remotely low at all? You don't even need to block properly. This guy's annoying me. Easy peasy. Might as well show this off. There is a uh, little secret room right here. Whip out your axe, not your pickaxe. Because this will actually get through quicker. Two swings instead of ten. <laughs> Drop down. I got a legendary out of this last time. Not what I meant to do. Where's the stairs? There we go. Nope. Did not mean to pop that potion. That's alright. Moving on over here. You will lose durability on your weapons a lot more easily than with the mage. So make sure to uh, repair that. There's actually another secret chest in one of these rooms. I think it's the next one. First little gliding puzzle. Another secret room right here. Still trying to get the legendary version of that Sinister Crescent Staff, as well as the Snake Spine Wand. Need to get the legendary version of both of those two. Those are the only two that I'm missing. Coming up to the second half of the gliding puzzle. Here's our first little boss area. Whip out your axe. One hit, we'll get rid of it. Oh my goodness. 
screwed. Come over here. One hit. You're good to go. Now for the boss, I actually like to use the one-handed weapons more and just stay at his feet. Because the only thing he'll ever use is his um, stop ability. Which is pretty easy to dodge. Although this is not a good spot for him. Let's try and lure him out a little bit. Dodge roll right when he slams, you won't get knocked up by that attack. You kind of just want to dodge in and out from in between his legs and kind of stay to the back, his back of the legs. you're swinging, you're gaining health and you won't die. Just never stop swinging. So, very, very easy. We never really had to worry about losing health on that. Another secret room here. And hit these two buttons. That'll open up this door. Another lootable chest in here. Shield, already got it. You're just seeing how much health regen we're getting. Now there's actually, believe it or not, another secret room right here that I found. Uh, take out your pickaxe. Uh, originally I stopped because I was like going straight back and uh, it was never ending but if you actually aim upwards as you're uh, picking here eventually you get to an area that leads into another room there we go you got a wooden chest here A silver chest here so nothing too crazy but legendaries can drop from those if you're lucky so I figured I'd show that off moving on I forgot to pop my uh, little fire summons there too I didn't even bother quickly heal up here There's actually another secret room right here. Just a small wooden chest. Some more arrows and spells, always nice. And then this will probably be the last area that I show off, similar to my previous video. This just has a ton of enemies. Why not? Let's throw up some uh, fire sprites for this battle. Have some fun with it. never goes down. You pretty much like can't die as long as you're swinging.
see the damage numbers on our core striker are a little bit higher. But we get a little bit more health regen with the uh, Bone Scourge Maze. Show off the axe again real quick. Alright, see if we can get lucky this time. Stop hitting that. Super, super easy. Alright, moment of truth. Am I going to get lucky? <laughs> Every time. I feel like all I get is the, the two-handed mace and the bow from that chest. Unlucky. If anyone wants to trade for that staff, if you got an extra legendary staff, by all means, let me know. I've been looking for it forever. Yeah, I think that is a good place to stop. As you can guys see, super, super easy. You just have infinite survivability. You can take things down super quick. No troubles whatsoever. Um, let's head back to the base for a little recap here. But uh, yeah, uh, quick reminder, I do have my updated Hunter build that I'm going to be dropping here shortly as well. Got a few more tests to do with that one, but I think that one's going to be pretty fun too. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much the build, you guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the combat demo. Again, super strong, super high survivability. It's almost easier, in my opinion, than the Wizard. And before, the Wizard was the overpowered class. Now, the Warrior, I feel, is actually even stronger, at least for the Hollowed Halls. Um, and the, the pack sizes make your health regen just so easy um, when it comes to fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to smash that like button, comment down below. I appreciate all of your guys' feedback. Um, in regards to feedback, um, if you uh, pay attention to my pinned comment, that is where I'll always post all of the build updates. Um, if I find new things out or if someone recommends me something that I end up agreeing with and want to update, I'll put that in the pinned comment. So I'll always be checking that out and reading that. Um, lastly, if you guys want to join a community of like-minded gamers, feel free to check the links down in the description and join us on the uh, Discord. We've got hundreds of players in there especially for the enshrouded community um so hopefully you uh join us and i see you guys around sometime soon uh, but until the next one hope everyone had a great day and i'll see you guys later